Welcome to Everything is Messy, the podcast. I'm your host, Kellyanne Gorman. I'm someone who loves to create content, products, and services to help others level up in business and in life. I even wrote a book about it, and now I have a store. Everything is Messy is a one-stop shop for women who want it and deserve it all. From personal development to productivity, podcasting and publishing, small business strategies to entrepreneurship, and so much more. Tune in every week to enjoy this one-of-a-kind podcast experience and hear fun, fearless, and focused conversations from myself and my incredible guests from trending topics to stories of resilience and all things business. And let's not forget about a few of my favorites, mindset, healthy recipes, and organizing tips. These episodes are created to get you to where you want to be right now. The purpose of the show is to motivate you, inspire you, and prove to you that anything is possible if you just put in the work. So grab your favorite notebook and pen because it's time to get organized and turn those dreams of yours into reality. I'm living proof that manifesting and visualizing and having a never give up attitude work and now it's my job to help you achieve your goals by doing the same or just to provide some laughs along the way. I'm so glad you are here. Today's episode starts now. Hey, Maddie, welcome to the Everything is Messy podcast. Thanks for being here. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be on and chat today. I found you on my FYP on TikTok and I read your story. Well, I saw your story rather And it made me realize that there are so many more people in this world that have suffered with a chronic illness and learned how to, or maybe they're in need of learning how to, heal themselves with food. And that's exactly how you got to where you are now. So share your story. (laughs) Yes. So uh, hello, everyone. My name is Maddie. I am 25 years old. And my chronic illness story really started when, honestly, I was like a few months old. Um, I was always a sick child, um, whether it was me being allergic to cow's milk or over the counter medicine or randomly my joints would swell overnight and I would have to be rushed to the hospital. Um, I was kind of always in and out of the hospital and doctors, um, always just having, it really started with allergic reactions, um, to my joints, my skin, my throat. Um, and then from there, Um, it just kind of got progressively worse and worse and worse throughout my life. Um, I'm super grateful kind of as a backstory that my mom is very natural homeopathic alternative. So she always looked at the natural route. So I was going to naturopaths, um, homeopathic doctors, alternative doctors, and they were really doing like full body scans, blood work. And they, um, were, showing me like, oh, it was this, this wrong, or your liver's wrong, or you have this toxicity or whatever. Um, And they were always giving me like herbal supplements and remedies and stuff, but not one single one of my doctors ever touched on diet. Um, And that always stuck, it stuck with me in the back of my mind. I'm like, why we, this is what was interesting to me is that we are consuming something sometimes hourly, like we're eating breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, drinks, teas, whatever it is, we're consuming something like literally sometimes hourly and not one single person, doctor or medical professional ever touched on that. And that was a huge red flag to me. Um, So I was 22 years old. I had just graduated college. I moved to LA. Um, I had started my first corporate job. I moved into my first apartment. I was learning out how to spend money on my own. Like I huge life changes and I had a face full of acne and I was like, Oh, it's probably because of, I have so much change. I'm so stressed. I'm trying to figure this out. Like I'm trying to figure out this whole adult thing. Um, and I remember I went to my homeopathic doctor for like six months and he finally was like, that's all I have for you. Uh, that he's like, the information I've shared with you, the medications I've given you, that's all I have. And I was like, what do you mean that's all you have? He's like, that, that's, that's all the information I know. And I was like, I left that appointment. I was just like, honestly, my heart hurt. I was like, yeah. what does that even mean? Like, yeah, I'm I, done. I'm, I'm done helping you. <laughs> I am willing to pay you. I'm willing to put in the work. I'm willing to do anything for my acne is kind of why I started my healing journey first off. Um, and he was just like, well, that's it. This is it. And so I went home and I was kind of pissed off, obviously. And I was like, something's wrong. This is broken. Like I have dealt with issues for 22 years. They've gotten worse and worse and worse. Um, in high school, I had horrible thyroid issues, hair loss, 
growing up, I was very, very, very skinny, like to the point where I was bullied for being bulimic and anorexic, anorexic because I just simply couldn't gain weight. Um, it was to the point where my mom was making me milkshakes and burgers and French fries, like anything to kind of get me to stick weight on. Um, and it was just because I was so frail. I always had stomach issues. I was never digesting my food. I wasn't absorbing nutrients. Um, so overall I was just in a bad spot, but the thing that really made me start my acne or my healing journey was my acne. Once I dove into that, I realized that once I changed my diet, my bloating was gone. My digestion issues were gone. My thyroid issues were gone. Vitiligo was gone. Brain fog, my learning disabilities, like any problem for my health that I saw, within the when the months went on and on and on I was like oh my gosh I have so much more energy I don't have my vitiligo anymore like I was just noticing so many benefits and I was completely completely mind blown I think it's so crazy that only up until a couple of years ago a doctor would actually mention food or even ask what is your diet like no one No one says that. And when I was um, sick with this disease, NMO, that was supposed to leave me blind and paralyzed, one of the reasons why I was misdiagnosed, well, the the reason why was the drugs that I was put on, their side effects were the same as the disease. So it was like mimicking. And no one's asked, like, what drug are you on? Like, that's why you have to be your own advocate. You have to be super organized when it comes to medical records. I'm actually in the middle of creating, well, since 2016, I've been creating a medical product because I've lived all sides. I've been the patient. I've been the advocate. I've been the caregiver, the attorney, and literally a doctor saving my own life. And I did it with my mind and my gut and just with food. And that's why I love your story so much because you persevered and I know for sure, like, you'll agree with me when I say this, but, like, there are so many people. I honestly would say, like, more than 75% will just give up, and they believe a doctor, but you kept fighting, and you kept going, and you're going, you're like, this is literally my whole life. Like, what is causing this? Like, I will give you all of my money, my family's income. Like, I just want an answer to, like, survive and figure it out, and they're like, no. Like, that's when you realize, like, they really don't give a shit. Like, you have to be your own advocate, number one. 100%. And I think um, the thing that I, that's most rewarding for me, looking back on my healing journey, would not change one thing. Mm. I love my story. I love my struggles because it made me the person I am today. I would not be here this strong and this happy and this confident in myself if I did not go through the past three years of shit. Um, but with that being said, the work that I do today, I'm so passionate about it because I've been there. I know what it feels like to not be able to get out of bed. Mm -hmm. I know what it feels like to not know how to explain to your boss, your mom, your sister, your coworker, how you're feeling. Like I get it. And so I'm so passionate to share my knowledge and my experience with as many people as possible and to get them out of their misery. Um, also like one other thing that I think I kind of just, clicked and like realized today is that I have like all of these old co-workers and like people I grew up with and like friends that I haven't seen for 15 years DMing me like oh my gosh this is amazing I'm so happy you're doing this like and I'm not just saying that to toot my own horn because there's a bunch of healers and holistic practitioners out there but just basically to say that people need this work like mm-hmm. people need our help and I think it also goes back to like people walk around with chronic illnesses and feeling like shit and they're okay with it or they just accept it yeah having (laughs) migraines like even something as simple as migraines and headaches like occasionally that's not like having women having bad period cramps not normal um and i think what i always say is if you have a symptom any sort of symptom like low energy or brain fog or whatever it is that is of your body communicating to you something needs to change. Mm -hmm. There's something going on internally that's not right and you need to address it now because if you don't address it now, it'll keep emphasizing and multiplying to the point where you're bedridden or you have a face full of acne or whatever it manifests to. And also the difference between you and somebody else that's doing exactly what you're doing, your level of passion exceeds anybody else because you've lived it. So Mm -hmm. I was on an interview with somebody else the other day and we were talking about, we both had medical malpractice cases and we both represented ourselves. I had six, she had one case and 
it doesn't matter the cases, but we were in it. We lived it. A medical malpractice attorney doesn't give a shit. They just want to win the case and take your money. That's why most of the, that's why I had to represent myself. I called over a hundred attorneys. Then at the end of the day, they want to hire me to consult because I just pulled off a miracle in the middle of the pandemic. And I'm like, yeah, and you can cut me a check for X amount of dollars because you wouldn't take my case in the first place. But like, they don't have the passion. Like you lived through it, which makes you so good at what you do because you understand what the person coming to you like truly needs. Like you were curled up in a ball in a bed, like you felt the pain and like, I get it too. And something that you incorporate into your business is you always say mind, body, spirit. And a lot of people also don't include mental health. And I think that should be number one because I cannot even tell you, I'm a huge advocate. I always say I have anxiety, I have depression. It's from my PTSD, from everything I've gone through. But unless you have a routine and you know what works and you really like put in the work for your own self, you can't help anybody else. But you also know that, okay, I still may have like a dark day and I just need to do like somebody interviewed me last week and they were like, I forget what they asked me, but I said, you know, if I can get up, open my eyes and just stand up with my leg, there were days I didn't think that that was going to happen. And now it's like, okay, if I'm going through like a dark depression, like it just happens out of nowhere. And that was, um, I feel like it was like three, it was like mid January And I was just so depressed, like out of nowhere. And then I realized, because your body always remembers trauma, I was anniversarying dates of things that had happened to me. And that, like, I didn't even realize that till like a couple years ago when I had to put in the work, you know, like with healing and everything. But I'm like, oh my God, I'm anniversarying this. No wonder why I'm triggered. And I'm like, if I just make my bed and make my delicious iced coffee and I have to go back to bed, I made my bed. Like, that's what you need to do is just get up, make your bed if you have to go back in it. But that way, like, if you're severely depressed, you're like, I did one thing for myself. Like, that's actually a huge, like, win for you if you're somebody that's going through, like, such a hard, like, dark period of your life. But I like that you incorporate that as well because there's so many people that are in this space that you're in and there's so many like people are constantly searching for this information because of unfortunately the drugs that we're put on or the way that we're eating and you really put in the work to showcase and you've lived that story. So like you're living proof, right? So you're like, okay, you have to do it this way, but it's not just the food. Like you have to heal everything else. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's a good point for me to segment and kind of explain that portion of my story. So yeah. I actually just hit the three-year mark of when I decided to change my life. Um, It was about, like, I think late January. Mm -hmm. And so, 2019. So, I was on the healing journey for, like, a year and four months. So, this was right when um, the lockdown happened. Mm -hmm. I was doing everything right physically. I was – I cut out – the processed foods. I was juicing. I was eating like a uh, lots of fruits and vegetables. Um, I was sweating. I was doing lymphatic drainage. I was, you name it, like you name it. I was doing it. I was at the, my lowest point a year and four months or a year and like two or three months into my healing journey. I was at my lowest point. I lockdown happened. My face was covered in acne, covered in vitiligo and I flew home to be with my family and I remember just crying to my mom I'm like what the fuck like what is going on like I was like I'm doing everything I'm so disciplined I'm so motivated I don't even think about touching any sort of processed food what's going on and my mom was like of course being a mom she was researching all this stuff on the internet and she said I think you need to do this I think you need to add this in like try this product and and that's so frustrating (laughs) So I was never, ever doubted my, my diet or my lifestyle changes. I never doubted it. I knew the second that I was introduced into this way of eating in this lifestyle, the second I switched over, I switched cold Turkey overnight and I never looked back. I was like, this is going to work. Um, and so finally I came across this intuitive healer on Instagram and I followed her. I had followed her for a few months and I'm always the type of person where I'm like, you know what? 
this is my problem. I'm going to solve this. I'm going to get myself out of this 100%. I don't need help from anyone else. And I think that that kind of is one of my flaws. Like even now to this day you're in work, like I will slave over something for 10 hours when I can just ask someone the question. Like I will, I just, am, I don't like to bother other people essentially. Um, so finally, um, it was a sign from the universe, but she had posted on her Instagram stories. Like um, she was booked for like months and months and months and she's like put on her instagram stories i have a few sessions left they're going to be discounted and i was like okay you know what? i'm just going to book a 30 minute session it's discounted like if it doesn't go well it's like i lose a couple dollars whatever i that session with her changed my life 1000 percent. that 30 minutes was probably the most important beneficial 30 minutes of my adult life she basically analyzed me and, and like I opened up to her what was going on and like she knew my backstory and everything and she analyzed me and she was like, you are doing 120% everything right physically, but mentally and emotionally, you're not allowing yourself to heal. Mm. She's like, you look in the mirror and you tell yourself you're ugly, which I did. I looked in the mirror and told myself that no one would love me. I was ugly because of the way my skin looked. I um, told myself that I wasn't healing. I didn't trust my body. I didn't trust the process. I had never, I didn't know how to deal with my, my emotion or mental emotions or my mental state. Like I had never known like what that looked like. And so she kind of analyzed me and she was like, look, you got to like, you're in a dark hole mentally and emotionally. Like we got to pull you out of this. So basically she was like, get your emotions out. Like if you have a therapist, if your mom will listen to you, if you want to write it out on a piece of paper, just whatever you're feeling inside it, it's, boiled up and it's like it needs to pop out so mm -hmm. I started doing that I started journaling I started meditating and I started just analyzing my thoughts like how was I feeling about situations why did I think I was feeling that way about situations and how could I change it from negative to positive I changed my state so I was instead of in this like negative this identity of being chronically ill because for 22 years I was sick I was mm. chronically ill and so I was in this identity that I'm sick. People look at me for my differences. I got myself in these, this situation. Um, and I really like looked down on myself for those. Um, and I just completely switched my narrative and my, my train of thought. Um, and I'm not even kidding you in two weeks, my acne was 50% better. The vitiligo on my face was filling in. My bloating was gone. My energy, like I just within two weeks of like, I just needed somebody to tell me like, snap out of it, get out of it, switch that. And in like literally almost instantly, I was, I was living like a 180 of my life. Like I changed my identity and I was like, I'm healed. You know what? I don't, I'm done thinking that I'm sick. I woke up, I'm healed. It's like, I was so just changed my identity. And then from there, it was just a ripple effect on everything else that happened. That's so incredible. And the same thing, happened with me. Like after I was misdiagnosed, I went straight into the medical malpractice cases. So I wasn't able to heal. I was so angry and I was still like experiencing all these issues because it was all from like the stress and the trauma. Like I didn't put in the work to heal. Like our, our minds are so powerful and I'm obsessed with Dr. Joe Dispenza. I've seen the documentary Heal. Oh, Jim Quick, man. like Dr. Um, Amen, like anybody that researches the brain. And for me, my healing was EMDR for my PTSD. And then I did um, sound baths. I listened to them all night long. And that's when I finally started to heal. Like I had this like gut and I'm like, okay, now I'm juicing. I'm like making my healthy meals, but my gut was like off. And I'm like, that's trauma. That's literally stress sitting in my body. And unless you go through something like this, like, and then heal, that's when you realize like, holy shit, like our mind and bodies are so fucking powerful. Like, and you literally healed yourself, like by putting in the work mentally, emotionally, physically, like all the ways, and you can't just do one. So it's like a yeah. triple effect and it's so much more, it's so much harder, but right. you have to do it, you know? So right. What did you do? What did you go to school for? And what were you doing before you, because now this is your life, right? You're helping other people. So how did you pivot? Like, what were you doing before then right. where you are now? So I went to the University of Alabama for college. I graduated in public relations and computer science. 
Um, I moved to LA. I started working for a tech startup doing marketing. Then I went on to work for a magazine publication company, um, and I was doing all sorts of advertising sales for fashion, auto, travel, home, leisure. Um, I was just really thrown into like another corporate situation. Um, and that those were both out of LA Pandep- pandemic happened. Um, I realized LA was no longer home for me. <laughs> um, it kind of my time in LA, I was, that was when I was really sick and really healing. And so once I moved away from LA, I moved to, um, I was in Florida kind of right when the pandemic happened and I was there for like four or five months and I healed so much in that time period just being in the ocean outside meditating like sunrise meditations um and then I realized you know LA is no longer home for me I went back to LA packed my stuff up left um and then I moved back home with my parents wasn't Um, that an outer body experience because now you're like in the healing stages right so now you like revisit your old life and your old self and it's just like you're like that's when you I feel like that's when it clicks when you're like holy shit, I'm healing. Like, I just did this for myself. But if you were still in the bubble in LA, it's like you couldn't get out. But now you're, like, revisiting it. Right. It's I, so crazy. That's, that's probably part of the reason why I left LA. Um, I still love LA. I love Malibu. I love Santa Monica. Like, love the vibes and the energy and the beaches and the outdoors. But it just – it wasn't for me. My soul just my, – my time there was done. Um, but the thing is, so when I left LA in March, 2020, and I was in Florida until like July, 2020, um, those four months, like I said, were huge, like growth spurt for me. And so when I went back after July, in July, I went back to LA. So I had to deal with my mail, my apartment, everything. Um, and I, I just, I remember stepping foot into my apartment and I I remember looking at my couch and I'm like, that couch is so gross. I remember myself every weekend like I, I didn't have energy I was healing like on the weekends I would sit there and like binge watch tv and youtube because like I didn't that was like all I could do when I was healing like I was selfish I had like couldn't I had to like protect my energy and so and then even the thought of like even simple th- I would think about like my drop my car ride to work like how I was always so sick and like sitting at my desk at work like it just all was like so behind me and so that's why I kind of moved on. Um, and so I quit that corporate job. Um, I had that all the way until what was it? May, 2021. And I was like, you know what? I have this gift. I went through my troubles and my hardship for a reason. And now I know that reason is to help people to share my story, to share my knowledge, my findings with as many people as possible, because there is light at the the end of the tunnel. I know for people who are sick and chronically ill out there, it doesn't seem like it, but there are answers and these answers need to be screamed from the rooftop. Um, Seriously. (laughs) I started my own holistic health brand. Um, and I've just been working with clients online, um, communicating and just conversing with people like over Instagram and TikTok and like just sh- just understanding people's stories. Um, and that's a yeah. huge part, too, as a patient when someone listens. Right. Because we're used to doctors not listening to us. But now they're coming to you as basically their doctor. They're looking for healing yeah. and health and all the coaching. And you're listening. That is like the biggest gift that like somebody just listens and they understand. And then that's like how your healing journey was like, okay, now, you know, when you went to the spiritual healer, like, oh my God, the answers, like people are just yearning for like so much information because the medical aspect of it, like they're not getting it. They're getting another pill and that is making it 10 times worse. (laughs) I know. And I think that like specifically for me and I can also feel it and understand it through my clients. Like, when I started learning more about this diet and lifestyle and like the mind, body, soul connection and like mental, emotional, and physical healing, everything made sense. Mm. Like everything that I was learning, I was like equating it back to like Pat, my past, like chronic illness times. And I'm like, that makes sense. Why that happens. Like everything kind of added up. Whereas like at doctor's offices, I'm like, that analysis doesn't make sense. Yeah. That what you just said doesn't add up. Like that was a misdiagnosis. Like, and so I think it's just, that's you start realizing and it also has a huge thing to do with being more connected and more aligned with yourself Mm -hmm. once you start kind of changing your diet and connecting with your physical body 
then you just are so much more aligned and like clear on your path, your intentions, your intuition, like everything almost starts to conform together and like kind of just go on. Like now I'm just like on autopilot, I feel like, because I'm so connected to myself, like my emotions, mentally, how I'm feeling, my relationships with others and myself. It's just insane. I, I never knew how disconnected I was before my healing journey. It's so true. And I feel the absolute same way. And it's not until you do the work and you go through this insane life and process and misdiagnosis and everything in order for you to truly feel that. You know, I was like meditating every day and I would go for my beach walks, but was I doing therapy? Was I healing with sound baths? Was I do? That's extra that like my mind and body like truly needed. Like, am I reading more, binging too much Bravo? Like all those little things add up and it just makes such a overall huge difference in all of your body, mind, body, spirit, like all of it. So I want to kind of pivot to food because I know that you're all obviously talking about food and how you heal. What are some of your, like, do you just love going into the kitchen to like create new recipes like me? Is that your thing? (laughs) I I live in the kitchen. Me too. We need to share recipes. We need to like write a book together. So the reason why my book is so different is because, so long story short, I was writing a book from 2016 about my crazy life and luxury travel and everything else. Then I got sick and I'm like, I kept getting stuck and I'm like, nobody wants to read this depressing fucked up story. Like this is not a happy book. I want to write a book that's going to make me people happy. And I'm like, cooking makes me happy. I used to cook on yachts. I've always created recipes. Like that was therapy. When I was going through chemo, I was in the kitchen because there was nothing else I could freaking do. I couldn't be on my computer. I would have nerve damage. I would have like all these issues, like side effects from all the drugs. Right. But at the end of the day, what made me happy was creating all these healthy recipes. So I'm like, I'm going to write a cookbook. So I stopped my whole book and I started writing a cookbook. It was called The Chemical Free Cookbook. So I wrote all my recipes. I created everything vegan because at the time I'm not 100% vegan, but I know how healing food is. And every now and then, which I need to ask you this question next, but um, that was how I healed coming off of all the, I think it was 13 prescription meds. I healed my body just like everything that you were doing with food, right? That's why I'm so inspired by your story. It's the same. Like, I love it so much. And so I was writing my cookbook, but then as I'm writing the recipes, it would trigger me and it would remind me of the date, the day, what I was wearing, if I could actually remember that part, but why I was making that recipe, like what happened that day. I remembered that part. A lot of things are blocked out in my mind, but I always remembered the day I was making my homemade veggie burgers or my pizzas. And so I started writing that. And then that's how the other half of the book came together. Cause I'm like, wait, now I have all these chapters of personal development and a freaking cookbook. And I'm like, you know what? Nothing in my life has ever been normal. So they're going together. So that's how that happened. Yeah. That's but amazing. yeah. And it's just, thank you. I am obsessed. I actually had to create another TikTok yesterday because, you know, I have all my business and my productivity and all things podcasting. Right. But then people get confused if they're not familiar with my brand. I'm like, I just need my recipes on a brand new TikTok, like recipes only. So I actually had to do that the yeah. other day. So my question to you is because you're vegan, right? hundred percent vegan. Yeah, well, I say plant based. Okay, um, plant based. So I think in the in the in the in the vegan world, like if you, I consume raw honey for the medicinal and like healing properties. Um, that's, that's legal. I know that because it's in my book. <laughs> I made that mistake. I'm like, oh my god, the bee lovers are coming after me. <laughs> I know. Yeah. So I say I'm plant based. Okay. Um, so for that reason only. But I know. I and I should have done the same. I learned my lesson. Somebody messaged me and I'm like, it's, save the bees. So there's, there's always so much hate and people are like, well, you're, you eat this, you eat. And it's like, calm down. But then if people say they're plant-based, like some plant-based eaters eat egg and cheese and fish. And then I'm like, wait, then what's the difference between normal eating and yeah. plant-based eating? Like, why do you have to put a title on us? Just let us live and heal yeah. people. <laughs> I know. I'm just like, food is medicine. Use yeah. food how you want. Like, I know. And like, I always say what worked for me different for everyone else everyone has different bodies like, yeah I'm just in my story don't come at me well it's like the whole thing like okay I'm keto but I'm vegan keto or I'm this keto or I'm like I'm doing this diet like in the diet world right because I had um I developed a lot of podcasts for food and body coaches at one moment 
yeah. before the pandemic, they all came out of this whole training. So they were all referring each other to me. So I was just dealing with a lot of food and body coaches. And I'm like, why do you have to have a fucking title? Like, just eat healthy food. You know, like, it, everything is like, so like, no matter, no wonder why so many people have like a weight issue, you know, but um, two questions. So because these are like personally for me, but I think that the audience would like really appreciate them. Because I try to do plants all the time, right? But every now and then I need a burger. So, like, when you get that craving, maybe you don't get them anymore. But, like, what do you do when you have that craving where you want meat? And then also after that I want to talk about the heavy metals. Like, do you even have that anymore? That craving? So, I think I'm at the point where I've been doing this for three years. And I think it's important for me to talk about what I was doing before. So, I was vegetarian before I went plant-based or okay. vegan. Um, and then before vegetarian, I would test out veganism like here and there. Mm -hmm. um, for the summer I did it and I was just always curious about it. Like at the time, my cousin was vegan. My uncle was vegan. Um, my mom had always raised us on like a very plant focused Mediterranean diet. And so my mom was Lebanese and Armenian. So she was making a bunch of like. Oh my God, the most delicious food ever. Yeah. <laughs> We, we make a lot of lamb, um, but she went growing up, but now she makes like ve me vegan grape leaves and um, different hummus and tabbouleh, like gluten-free and vegan. So she does, a, she's an amazing cook and that's kind of, I get a lot of inspiration from my mom and she taught me a lot that I know in the kitchen. Um, but as far as like the cravings, I think I, for me personally, I kind of got over those cravings before I, I started my, officially started my healing journey because I was already introduced into the vegan slash vegetarian lifestyle um, mm -hmm. um, before. Um, I also think that I was so sick and so beside myself and determined to heal that I found something that worked for me, um, aka vegan or plant based. Um, the di the diet I currently and still do. I found what works for me, and so I kind of just just went with it. Like I, so overnight I went, I cut out. A, it, the only animal products I was eating were, was dairy and, and eggs. Overnight, I cut those out, and I have not thought about eating them ever since. Because yeah. I, I think once I educated myself on how it affected my body and what it was doing and making me sicker, mentally and emotionally, I'm just, like, grossed out. I'm like, I, the food I was eating before was making me sick, so why would I go back to that? And I'm not necessarily yeah. saying that, like, these foods are bad or that they can make you sick. But personally for me, it just did, they didn't agree with my system. Yeah. And I, I it's so weird. Cause like every now and then I wake up and I'm like, I need ground Turkey. Like my body is just like, I'm dying for it. As soon as I eat it, I'm like, why did I do that? So then I start, yeah. I would start researching like, what, it, what am I deficient in that I'm craving that? That's how I kind of flip the script on that. But also, I have to say this because so many people say like, okay, I'm plant-based, I'm vegan, I'm all of this, and then they're eating the processed shit, which is filled oh, with inflammatory to the 10th it's degree it's everything. It's yeah, it's, it's so bad. So do you know yeah. Wake Up and Read the Labels on Instagram? Yes. Okay, she's coming on the show soon. She, I got okay. schooled by her in her canola oil situation. I will look at every freaking bag and I'm like, sunflower oil, sunflower oil. So I'm like, this is why we have a problem. Like, and then autism linked to red dye, all the dyes and the chemicals, like with kids shit. Like we didn't grow up yeah. with, with that stuff. Like, why is it? And they're just like promoting and she's always circling on her stories. And I was like, um, I remember I found a bag of chips at Trader Joe's and they're so cheap. They're like one ninety nine. They're just Trader Joe, russet potatoes, olive oil, salt. Yes. Three yeah, ingredients. Yeah. And I sent her yeah. the picture and I was like, look what I found. <laughs> and um, I was so excited. Yeah, it, it's the food labels. is. It's awful. Part. And people think, especially, okay, so now they're vegan, it's, right? It's, it's killing people. It's, I hate to say it, but it. The, our food system is killing people. Oh, for sure. Be to, so corn, potato, and what's the other one? The three worst. Um, that's Soy. the oats. The oats are sprayed. The corn is sprayed. And then um, the potato, like chemical-wise, pesticide-wise. Yeah, soy is up there, too. Yeah, soy. So that's what I was going to say. So, like, the whole thing with, like, vegan cheese, it's all soy. Like, except for a couple that I found that are, like, really good. But... They either have canola oil 
or soy. So you have these people that it's almost like a crash diet when they go to switch to like the healthy veggies, right? Their body's not used to it, but then you're putting in all the shit that inflames you. And then you have all these other issues. And like, that's not how you heal. (laughs) I've done all that. Let me tell you. (laughs) Yeah, no, definitely. It's that whole, like the mock eggs and there are like, don't get me wrong. There are like, I found a couple vegan cheese brands that are cleaner yeah but i like if i want something like a pizza i'll just make my own like cashew ricotta cheese yeah Um, i like if there you always have to look at labels always 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 like the oils the sugars the citric acid natural flavors ascorbic acid gums like and like i guess this also goes into the plant-based milk thing yeah the Oh, those like almond milks and oat milks, the label is like 35. And you can't even, it. Like, you guys, you don't even know it. You read the label and you can't even pronounce it. Yeah. I was going to say that you can't even pronounce the fucking word. You don't even know what it is. And that's what, and, and I think that's, I'm very, very grateful because my mom looked into every single thing that she bought, everything that she gave us or put on our body if I had a rash or I went to the doctor she always 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 took that antibiotic or that prescription home she got went into the computer room started researching online the side effects what happens if you take it what do the side effects outweigh the benefits and so she really really instilled it in my mind to always always no matter what it is look at the ingredients and the label at the label and understand what those products good or bad do to your body. That's amazing because you grew up so lucky because a lot of people still grown adults don't even think they just grab it. Right. They never look at a label and going back to like my chemo days, I would always want a veggie burger. I go into the freezer aisle beyond me or whatever those things are. It was like red dye and oil. I'm like, where's the fucking vegetable? I want one vegetable. That's how I created. I seriously have like 50 different versions. I'm I'm trying to work with a brand to have them take them from me <laughs> um, because I'm obsessed with these veggie burgers because there's right. veggies in them. Like they're actually good for you. That's how I started making them because I got so frustrated one day and I'm like, all this shit is... Um, like I'm already putting all these drugs in my system and I can't even get a vegetable from a veggie burger. I was trying to find stuff in the freezer aisle that was healthy because I was so weak. Like I didn't want to cook some days. Right. So I was always searching for that and I'm like, I'm just going to figure it out. And so I figured it out and now I have all these versions and I'm constantly like creating new ones because I usually come up with them when I have like leftover stuff and it's ready to go bad. Then I'm, then I try it again. I'm like, that's a good one. And then sometimes they fail and I'm like, never do that one again. (laughs) Right. Yeah. I think, um, as far as going back to like the cravings thing, like, yeah, there's been a few times where like, I really crave chicken nuggets I don't know why I wasn't I didn't even like chicken nuggets really as a child but I love barbecue sauce and I used to like love barbecue sauce french fries and chicken nuggets Mm -hmm. and so when that craving comes up like once every like 18 months I will just make like a cauliflower breaded um with like gluten-free breadcrumbs Mm -hmm. cauliflower like chicken and then just dip it in chicken in barbecue sauce like a clean barbecue sauce and that like completely satisfied my cravings. Um, I used to be a huge French fry girl. I always make my homemade French fries at home with like a little bit of avocado oil. Salt, mm-hmm. garlic, garlic they're butter. so good though. Like they're yeah. so good. People don't understand. Like I know. So anytime I have a craving, like, and I'm really thankful that my mom, um, like I said, she's a genius in the kitchen. And every time I'm like, oh, I really want this or I want this, she's like, all right, let's make it. And so she'll just like throw some ingredients together. It's always amazing because she knows what she's doing in the kitchen um and I think like the way that I promote my diet and lifestyles to my clients and just to everybody who consumes my content is this doesn't have to be a chore like because you are changing your diet and your lifestyle you don't have to sacrifice sacrifice your time your taste buds your being satisfied by your food you don't have to sacrifice any of that it's just about figuring out how to change your grocery shopping and your habits and your recipes and stuff yeah. and use ingredients and in ways that will promote your health in the right direction rather than step that make you kind of fall behind with processed ingredients. Um, and that's the biggest way that like I teach my clients that like 
there's re- alternative recipes for basically everything that you can make and learn how to do in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Even if you have no cooking skills, you learn. Like I like started really cooking in college. Right when I first started cooking, I didn't know what I was doing. Like I, I figured it out. It's like you just have to like, start. That's it. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> if you told me to go run a marathon right now, I would be like, you're crazy. But if you give me six months, I'll figure it out. So everything that's new is awkward. It's uncomfortable. You've never done it before. It's going to be weird. But once you figure out how to grocery shop, how to prioritize like, mm-hmm. when to make your your meals, how to prioritize a night routine, a morning routine, you figure it all out. Now, like, I'm just on autopilot. I'm like, this is so easy. I already know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And especially, like, going to the market, like, always stay on the outside, obviously. But, like, where we live now and where you were, we have, like, 2,500 supermarket options. <laughs> so it's, like, I go to Sprouts for my produce that's organic. I go to Trader Joe's for the salsa. I go, like, you have, like, why can't one store have everything that I need? Oh, no. Oh, yeah. And it's, like, of course, like, so I go to Costco for, like, the bulk produce because yeah. like, I juice it. And then I'm like, well, I have to go to tra- Whole Foods because Whole Foods has, like, my signature gluten-free products and, mm-hmm. like, sauces. But then I'm like, Trader Joe's has the cheapest coconut aminos and also Trader Joe's has good dried fruit and nuts mm-hmm. that's cheap. So I'm like, of course, they're all literally, like, 30 minutes away from me in Miami. So, so annoying. I, but grocery shopping and cooking and, like, being in the kitchen is, like, my hobby. Like I Mine, too. Like, I look forward to grocery shopping. I do, too. Oh, my God. I wish we would live closer. When I come to Miami, we're, we're just going to, like, roam yeah. the aisles together. Like, this, we're living our best life. Yes. <laughs> if you're ever in Miami, I, you would be in heaven, too. Like, the every Saturday, I go to a vegan farmer's market. They have raw vegan wraps and oh. like, any exotic fruit you want, any juice under the sun that you want. Like, there is a outdoor juice bar two blocks away from my apartment. Like, there's so much abundance and fresh fruit and vegetables and like just eating in the whole vegan and even yeah. raw vegan scene is like killer. And when I lived there, nobody even knew that word yet. <laughs> That's how long ago right. it was. Like nobody knew like a vegetarian, yes. Vegan? No. <laughs> no. Um side note that hummus, tabbouli and falafel, like I could live off them every single day. No. I created hummus I've got down. Tabbouli, I have friends um, who are also Lebanese, and they just, that's their dude. Like, I can't, I can't perfect the tabbouli just yet. I've tried a couple times. Falafel I made with lentils a few times. Oh, wow. It's, I'd say, like, 70% there, but you really got to, like, love the recipe to, like, you know, do it. Um, but it, it was decent, right? And then I, um, I, hummus I just love. Like, I would do that every day. Um, and then what's the other one I was going to tell you, um, besides the veggie burgers. Oh, I make these vegan popsicles now. Um, it's banana, unsweetened coconut, and then I use vanilla, cinnamon, nutmeg. They are, I still need to post it on my TikTok because I have had zero time lately, but the most delicious thing I've ever made because I made a Reese's with like the super dark chocolate from Trader Joe's, like the bar that's black. With yeah, yeah, yeah. Maldon salt on top and the crunchy Trader Joe's almond butter layered on the bottom that has zero sodium yeah. with cinnamon and then you freeze it and then you cut it in barks and it's like healthy Reese's. Right. And the pop started with, I did vanilla mint. I did crushed mint. Ooh, yeah. Those were good. But this coconut vibe is like you were on, like you're in the Caribbean. Like every night I'm like... Oh my God, this is so good. Yeah. And that's what I'm talking about. Like you, you test in the kitchen, like yeah. you put ingredients together, whatever you have in the fridge, just put it together. It might be gross. Never, then never make it again. It might be good or it might be okay. And then you just keep perfecting the recipe. Yeah. Um, and I think like how you were like, it's, you just said like, it's so good. Like I look forward to my meals. Like yeah. I, Every day when I, like, am, like, making my meals or I'm, like, like, literally I just ate dinner, but I'm, like, I'm going to make a orange dreamsicle and ice cream because oh, it's, those are and, so like, good. I look forward, like, I, like, have these cravings for fruits and vegetables because I know it, it's, it satisfies my physical body and my mind and my emotions and everything, mm-hmm. but also, like... I, I love the taste of it. And it's good for you. What do you think about jackfruit? Because I've messed around with that quite a few times because I know that you love barbecue. Yeah, and I love it. I was, um, I just get the can from Trader Joe's because that's the best one I can find. I drain it and all of that. But, like, 
you make like a cabbage slaw and put whatever you want on top, like it legit tastes like barbecue chicken. Like, uh, no, pulled pork, pulled pork or barbecue chicken, whatever. It's insane. There's so many things that you can use with that. Oh, totally. And it obviously just picks up the flavor and yeah. the seasoning and the sauce that you use. So I I usually do like like mock like pulled pork, um, like lettuce wraps or tacos or like one time a couple months ago I was craving a pulled pork sandwich. And so I just got gluten-free bread and I did the whole pulled pork sandwich shebang. Yeah. Um, it, I honestly like sometimes I literally will just saute it in like um, – seasoning and eat it plain like i'm obsessed it's with so pepper. good what about yeah. jicama wraps have you had those yeah the ones from trader joe's yeah good. Um, they go bad they, fast though that's my only they get moldy they get moldy really fast you have to eat them within like a couple days yeah like, there's too many for me to eat them in, in like just a, a couple days but i know they need uh, a smaller so... packet because i bought it once and it went bad before i even i was still working on the last packet and i was like stocking yeah. up right and i'm like oh my god they're already bad and i was so bummed but i got them i think because i wanted to do like my homemade little cabbage slaw and then add the jackfruit with the barbecue yes. but it's like okay i just like stir fried the jackfruit it's hot but now i'm putting it on an All ice right. cold jicama wrap it doesn't mesh well so i'm like that doesn't work so i'm like oh, i it cold and then when that day happened, I went to go grab them and they were like, no bueno. So. Yeah. So actually, so I, I got my mom hooked on them, like probably last year. They are so good though. And my mom was like, why are, they're like four or five dollars and like, you don't get that many. I know. Yeah. My mom was like, these are like stupid expensive. And so leave it to my mom. She, she makes her own. Like, don't even tell me. She no, makes her so own. Went, so, um. I grew up in Chicago, but my parents have a house in Florida. So my parents basically live in Florida now, but we were in Chicago and we go to like this little, um, Lebanese, like middle Eastern market. Oh, so I love those good with the, um, deli guy. And even though she never gets lunch meat anymore <laughs> and she went and she went to the produce section and she got a jicama and she was like, if I give you this jicama, can you slice it? Like you slice lunch meat. Oh, and he was like, smart. sure, I'll do it for you. He was like, I'll do it for you, but you have to go purchase the jicama and bring it back. So should we go purchase the jicama? We bring it back and he cleaned the deli slicer and everything. And he was slicing oh my God. the deli on, like, the turkey slicer. He was, like, he was showing us. He's, like, is this too thick? Is this too thin? Do you want it thicker? Like, and he was, I mean, we probably got 200 jicama wraps. Like, it was a pretty big jicama. But oh, my God. It was, we had jicama for days. <laughs> jicama we breakfast. Started, jicama lunch. We started experiencing or experimenting. And so my mom made, like, jicama chips in the oven. Um so yeah, it was, it was incredible. Oh my God. I love that story. And that's why you always need a hookup at your market. I always go to the Persian markets here. I'm obsessed with them. Yeah. And uh, honestly, like any international market is like my playground. Like I thrive there. And yeah. when I was writing my book, I had to, um, I was researching my thing with my recipes is that I was determined to get everything under $20. So a family yeah. could make it for under 20 or you're going to meal prep it for the week and it's 20 bucks, right? So I went to Target. I went to, for like the pantry items. I went to Sprouts, to Whole Foods, at like literally every store with my mask on in the middle of the pandemic, taking pictures of labels, crunching all the numbers and people started recognizing me. So I'm like, how much is this usually, you know? And then like they would help me out and I'm like, you always need to hook up at the store. <laughs> like it just helps when you least expect it. <laughs> yeah. No, no. no. real quick, I want to talk about um, detoxing from metals. What is something yeah. that you did for that? Or was there a specific test that you did? Yeah, so heavy metals is actually one of the most common found toxic toxins in the body that cause chronic illness. Um, and so specifically for me, I had very high elevated heavy aluminum specifically in my body, which aluminum and mercury, which correlates to vitiligo. Mm -hmm. uh, and so for me specifically, I did some heavy metal testing. Um, but what from my experience and what I've researched and learned is that a lot of the testing is not 100% accurate because it's a lot of these toxins are so far deep into our system and some of them are dormant and it's hard for these tests to pick up 
certain viruses and heavy metals and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, Once I started researching the true cause and understanding the cause of vitiligo, I realized, okay, I have to have, I have, it was proven in tests, but they weren't as, they weren't abnormal. And so that they were like abnormally high, but I'm like, I have to have heavy metals. Um, And so I just focused on a heavy metal um, detox protocol. So I started juicing. Celery juice is an amazing heavy metal detox. Oh, yeah. Detoxer, cilantro. Um, I started any anytime I make a juice, a green juice, whatever. I always add cilantro on top of my grain bowls, my tacos. I focused on a heavy metal detox smoothie, and that's it has the blueberry some, one. Yeah, wild blueberries are huge heavy metal detoxers. Cilantro, spirulina, barley grass juice powder, um, orange oranges, bananas, and you just blend it up. And I know it sounds really gross that there's cilantro in a smoothie. You can't even taste while, it. It took me a while to get used to it because if you do have um, heavy metals, um, cilantro could taste gross to you. Mm. And it, it, it's normal that it does could taste gross to you, um, but I um, – over time I've gotten used to it. And then I guess that makes sense. So like the less you would taste it, then you know, you're kind of healing. Like, Oh yeah. Detoxing. Right. And, like, now, I honestly crave the taste of cilantro or the flavor of cilantro. I put it in everything, like literally yeah. everything. And in my juices, every now and then I'll switch up like protein shake or juice. I do intermittent fasting. Do you do that? I've been doing that for years. Um, uh- no, I did it more in college, but now honestly, like it's better for me to just intuitively listen to my body yeah. and like figure out what I need in each moment. But now I wake up and I'm like, sometimes I'm starving and I'm like, okay, today's not a fasting day. So I do that. I do do that too. Thank right. you so much for coming on the show. You are a wealth of knowledge. I'm so glad you came on. Where can everybody find you? Cause I'm going to put all your info in the show notes and what do you have coming up? So... I'm on Instagram and TikTok. My username is at Madeline B Health, and I post recipes, my story, um, my specific element, elements, everything. So be sure to follow me on socials. I can't talk too much about what's going on, uh, what's upcoming, as I just really started working on it, but it's in the works. It should be a couple months, and. I am going to just be leveling up my offerings and how I work with my clients and connecting with people. So it is more content out there. And like I said, my biggest goal in this world is to help as many people and share my knowledge with as many people as possible. Um, And so I'm just looking forward to continue to create and help as many people as I can. I love all of that. And you guys, thank you so much for listening. I will put all of Maddie's links in the show notes and make sure you check back so that you can see what is coming up next in her world and make sure you follow her on TikTok and Instagram and we will see you next week. Thanks, Maddie. Thank you. Thanks so much for tuning in to Everything is Messy, the podcast. If you enjoyed what you heard today, I would love to know. Just leave me a review on the app or website you're listening on. To learn more about myself, join the community, read my book, or shop the collection, visit everythingismessy.com. While you're there, be sure to sign up to receive my weekly newsletter so you get all my announcements first. For all the behind the scenes and day-to-day content, follow along on Instagram at Kellyanne Gorman Official and Everything is Messy Collection. Links are in the show notes. If you have a product, brand, story, or service, you would like to share, send me a message on everythingismessy.com today. As always, thanks for listening, sharing, and reviewing. It truly means the world to me. Wishing you a happy, healthy, positive, and productive day, and I'll talk to you again soon. Everything is Messy is produced and syndicated under A Million Dreams Publishing. For more information on how you can launch your own book, podcast, or digital series, visit amilliondreamspublishing.com.